As our conversations continue here in San Diego, as the cattle industry summer business meetings continue, we're catching up with South Dakota rancher and president of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, Todd Wilkinson. And Todd, we uh, were able to catch up just a few weeks ago in, in Haver, Montana, as the Montana Stock Growers held their summer meeting. But uh, obviously we're down here. This is really one of the busiest times of the year for cattle producers, aside from the annual convention, because this is really where the policy creation really starts to take shape. Yeah, this is when you when you talk about NCBA being grassroots, this is the definition of it. You've, you've got all of the various state associations coming together and then producers coming here and putting ideas in for shaping policy for the future direction of the organization. This is where the hamburger gets made. And um, it, it's a wonderful process because you can literally see an idea come out of a local cattlemen's association and watch it go all the way up to national policy and then we put it into action and, and may end up with a, a new regulatory change or it may end up with a law change and uh just this morning during the regional meetings uh, fake meat was one of those top top issues uh colin woodall ceo of ncba and immediate past president of ncba donnie schiefelbein stepped in and we're talking about uh, fake meat, uh, the efforts to label it correctly. I guess, what are the efforts of NCBA? To, uh, what, what are those current efforts to make sure that real beef is represented well and that fake meat, the lab-grown meat to be exact, doesn't take away that market share or take away the hard work that cattle producers have put yeah. into promoting that real product? Absolutely. And, you know, I've got to preface my remarks by saying I'm not even going to give this stuff the credibility of using the term meat behind the word fake because I, I don't think it's on the on the same level you know we dealt with the uh, plant-based stuff and the consumer has proved that that's not going to get any legs and that's falling um, by the wayside but this cell cultured product is, is troublesome um, again I, I tell producers this is my area of biggest concern uh, looking in the horizon 10 years uh, with the money that is pouring into this uh, from the Bill Gates of the world and the Richard Bransons of the world. And then you got the animal activists jumping all over this. Uh, they see this as, as a way to solve all the woke issues in, in the country. So where are we at? We're, we're working this legislatively very hard right now. Um, in fact, I, as we speak today, I think there are four different bills um, in in DC dealing with this. Two of them are being debated as we are sitting here. And those uh, bills are trying to differentiate this product. You know, we got used to dealing with the, uh, the soybean type product or the, the, all the other products that they put into it, the Beyond Meat thing. We got used to differentiating that. Cell-based products are a totally different kettle of fish. And uh, we have to we have to treat it differently and we have to define it differently. You know, they want to be called, they want to be called cultured uh, meat. And, and if we let that happen, cultured meat, um, you know, th th that's a problem uh, because that sounds like a product that would come from a farm. And if you get a mislabel like that, uh, that consumer going to that meat counter is going to see a package of ground beef. Well, suddenly that ground beef product is not going to be differentiated from that other goop that they're trying to pass off that they grow in a big vat. So we're dealing with this legislatively and we're also dealing with this on a regulatory basis. So we're dealing with FDA and FSIS to make sure that the labeling gets uh, correct. But we're having to force the regulatory issue through legislative. Petrate dish protein, PDP. That's there you go. I like that. <laughs> Uh, and obviously, that's something we will continue to closely uh, to talk about and watch. And, and again, a big talking point here at the convention. And uh, also, uh, with uh, some of the challenges, we've seen some successes, but some frustrations. Of course, uh, you and I, over the past few weeks, have talked about the uh, Sackett v. EPA case, which was a big win uh, for the agriculture community and landowner groups and those that are opposing the overreach of federal government. But uh, we've also had some challenges when, even though that significant nexus test has been, uh, uh, the high court said you can't use that EPA, 
the EPA continues to push forward with this rule or hold it, and we are seeing a rewrite taking place currently, but what are some of the, the challenges, frustrations, and, and what is NCBA's take on all this right now? What, what's the work NCBA is doing on the rewrite of that WOTUS rule? Yeah, isn't it ironic that we end up with a 9-0 Supreme Court decision that totally uh, guts uh, EPA's uh, proposed Biden rule that, that they rolled out, and yet the, e the EPA comes back and says, oh, we just need to make a minor tweak to the rule, uh, even though the, the whole significant nexus test is out the window, EPA doesn't want to admit that, they, that their proposed rule is, has no legal foundation. So we went in, we obviously fought in the Texas courts and in the North Dakota courts trying to, trying to get this whole thing held up. Uh, the judges in those cases are allowing the EPA to go in and, and uh, tweak the rule. Frankly, I think that's not even possible. But the EPA doesn't want to admit defeat. Um, it, it doesn't seem like there really needs to be any substance in law anymore. It's just these regulatory agencies just go out, whether it's BLM, whether it's EPA, everybody just goes out and does their own thing. And then what does that force the producer do? What, it, what does the NCBA have to do? We have to be back into court. And you, you wonder how uh, you spend the quantity of money in a courtroom that you do but when you have to go in and fight every single issue, but if we don't fight it, nobody else is. It, it, it is NCBA on the front line, in there, in the trenches, uh, fighting these legal challenges, and we will not give up on, on WOTUS because that is a huge land grab. And ultimately, I, I know that EPA is gonna lose uh, if they come out with uh, a, a new rule that isn't sufficiently based. What are we gonna do? We're gonna challenge it in court again. The frustrating part of that to me is that we're wasting money um, to prove uh, that we're right, but that's the only way to succeed. Uh, my last area, of course, uh, there's a lot of contention uh, in terms of Brazilian beef coming into the United States. Uh, there's been a big call from all livestock and agriculture Absolutely. groups to that, uh, that beef uh, due to foot and mouth disease concerns and the, the atypical cases of uh, bovine spongiform encephalopathy or BSE. Obviously there's not a correct, uh, uh, Brazil it hasn't been reporting those correctly. Uh, USDA still has not stopped those or really considered that. What, what, what are some frustrations and what's the work on that front of uh, halting those Brazilian imports? Yeah, I, you hit a hot button for me because I tell you this Brazilian uh, deal just just accentuates how uh, out of touch uh, Secretary Vilsack is with, with America's producers because all, all the cattle groups joined together. Farm Bureau uh, joined with us. We are all calling for a ban. Um, you know, Brazil just ignores the rules. The rest of the world operates by a set of rules where we have to report an atypical case and it has to be done with a certain parameters. Brazil doesn't care. This is a sixth or seventh time that they have demonstrated over the years that the rules apparently doesn't apply to them. And, and yet we can't get our secretary, and this doesn't take legislation. This is a stroke of the pen type thing for the secretary of ag to be able to, to rectify this situation. And again, this is, this is not an issue that's contentious uh, among cattle producers. We're all in agreement on this and yet we can't even get Secretary Vilsack to pick up the phone and talk to us about this issue. Yep. Well, again, I just wanted to touch on that just a little bit, but Todd, I know you have a very busy day here, so I just want to thank you for joining us. And uh, friends, we'll continue to have more conversations uh, from San Diego here. Our coverage brought to you by our friends at Ag Risk Advisors. More conversations, as I mentioned, to come here from San Diego at the Cattle Industry Summer Business Meeting.